Welcome to another video brought to you by AICHE's online community, Connected. My name is Christine Chin, and I'm the Director of Technical Programming for AICHE, and I'll be your host today. With me here, I have Dr. Tom Peterson, Assistant Director for Engineering at the National Science Foundation. My guest was the featured speaker in the 2011 AICHE Annual Meeting International Year of Chemistry Plenary. So, so with that, I'd like to launch right into what um, what the subject of your plenary was about and ask you a critical question. What can one federal agency, particularly the NSF, reasonably do to stimulate innovation and economic development through strategic investments in our nation's colleges and universities? Well, Christine, first of all, uh, it, it, as, as the question implies, it's a, it, it's a very big challenge, but I do think there are, there are pieces and elements of that question that uh, NSF can and does play an important role in. First and foremost is that if you talk about uh, translation or innovation, you really have to have something to translate or to innovate on, and that really requires a good idea. And those good ideas come from basic research. And NSF's bread and butter has been and always will be uh, support for basic research in science and engineering. So you might sort of think of that as uh, an absolutely necessary, but not necessarily sufficient condition for for innovation or stimulating economic growth. But that's what we primarily do is support basic research. Another part of our investments, particularly in directorates like mine in engineering, is to invest in those ideas, some basic research ideas that may be use inspired or ideas that have the potential to be translated into a potential uh, product or process. And sometimes you refer to that as translational research. And a portion of our portfolio in engineering invests in some of those activities. And the final piece is really to make sure that what you're focusing on are important problems. And uh, we always are trying to make sure that we are aligned with the identified grand challenge problems uh, that we're all aware of. Uh, you probably are familiar with uh, the study that the National Academies did a number of years ago with support from the National Science Foundation to articulate what some of the grand challenges were. And no surprise, the kinds of topics that end up are related to health and energy and transportation and issues that are really important, not only to us here in this country, but, uh, but worldwide. So our portfolio of investments at uh, NSF, and in particular in the Engineering Directorate, has this complement of basic research, some aspects of translation research, and some focus on uh, grand challenge problems like energy and the environment. If you had to say where chemical engineers can play the biggest role um, in terms of the grand challenges, where would you say that would be? Well, I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm clearly biased having three degrees in chemical engineering. I, I think it is one of the most versatile uh, engineering degrees and gives you the opportunity to contribute in, in many different areas. Uh, you can think about you know, traditional uh, applications that are related to engineering systems, uh, a wide range of systems, uh, process control and so forth. But having this background in chemistry and more and more chemical engineers have backgrounds in biology as well, it allows you to really focus on fundamental issues of, of the sciences that are important in new engineering processes. So many new materials processes, for example, are are, are based absolutely fundamentally in chemistry and you and while you you need the engineering background you have to understand the chemistry as well energy issues environmental issues new materials these are all chemistry or chemical based uh, challenges and so I think uh, chemical engineering really has an unbelievable opportunity uh, to play a role in these areas so, and of course you know still in the traditional the so-called traditional fields of chemical engineering petrochemicals and chemicals and uh, pharmaceuticals all still important areas for, for those of us in chemical engineering to contribute. Well, that's, that's really interesting. Um, our other plenary speakers at the annual meeting had also noted that um, material science is going to be a key driver in innovation. And um, so I'd like to, for you to comment a little bit more about how materials um, how you see materials as impacting the future in, in globally for global innovation? Well, I think there's there, again there are just a lot of different uh, applications and uh, opportunities for contribution to new areas that materials offers. You can think about just 
the fundamental changes in materials properties that, that we've seen in, in studies of nanoscience and engineering uh, and how, as I said, they, would, they, they could contribute to, to new materials or properties of new materials. We've also seen how material studies have uh, given us new means for distributing uh, pharmaceuticals and drugs to cure disease or to treat uh, cancers and so forth. Uh, again, it was by both the physical and the chemical nature of these materials that you're able to target species to various places in the body. Um, and uh, as, as I said before, certainly with respect to engineer er, to energy problems, uh, th th this is a fundamental materials problem, whether you're thinking about designing a more efficient photocell, which is uh, based on the material properties, or figuring out a way to uh, produce, uh, directly produce uh, chemical feedstocks from uh, uh, biological processes, biofuels and so forth, as opposed to going through fermentation. These are all chemical processes. So I think uh, there are just lots of different areas and different ways that we can, we can contribute on the material side. That's great. And so I think that we'll stop right here because I think we have a good look into the future of innovation as well as the uh, side that NSF, the role that NSF can play in the future uh, innovations in the U.S. And so I'd like to thank you. Thank you. For the interview.